This is 6.1 Muscular System Notes. The essential question is, how are the three types of muscular tissue similar and different, and what are the functions and characteristics of muscle? The major organs of the muscular system is muscles. There are three types of muscles. There are the skeletal muscles, the cardiac muscle, and the smooth muscle. And there are over 600 skeletal muscles, and that's more than half of the body weight. Majority of the muscular system is made up of skeletal muscle, and cardiac and smooth muscle make a small portion of that. And they're all, in some way or another, involved in some form of movement. The first type of muscle tissue is the skeletal muscle tissue, which is the most abundant and majority of the muscular system is made up of skeletal muscles. The recall from the tissue unit that skeletal muscles are long and cylindrical in shape. They lie parallel to one another. And they have multiple, numerous, numerous nuclei and they're all kind of off to the side. They're not in the center. The location of skeletal muscle is attached to bone by tendons. They are striated, which means they have these bands, light and dark bands or stripes. Those are your striations. And skeletal muscles are voluntary, which means that you can actually control them. Cardiac muscles are similar to skeletal muscle in the sense that they are long and cylindrical just like skeletal muscles, but the difference is that cardiac muscles, they branch. They start off as one cylindrical long tissue or cell and they kind of branch off into two. Uh, they have also centrally located single nuclei, which is unlike the skeletal muscle, which is multinucleated. Like the skeletal muscle, they have striation, which are your stripes. The location of the cardiac muscle is, it forms the heart wall, which is involved in pumping blood, and it is joined to other cells via a structure called intercalated disc, which are your little bit darker bands. These are your separation from one cardiac muscle cell to another. And lastly, unlike skeletal muscles, cardiac muscle is involuntary, which means you don't get to control the muscle. Lastly, there is smooth muscle. And you know that smooth muscle gets its name from the fact that in smooth tissue, muscle tissue, that it almost looks like waves. Uh, the cells in the the smooth muscle cells are uh, spindle-shaped, which means they are thicker in the toward the middle, and then they taper off toward the side. They have a single centrally located nucleus, just like the cardiac muscle. Unlike the cardiac muscle and skeletal muscle, they do not have the striations. Location of the smooth muscle is found in hollow organs such as the digestive tract, the respiratory tract, and reproductive tract, even urinary tract, but also it forms the muscles of the eye around the pupil, which controls the amount of light that gets into the eye. Like the cardiac muscle, smooth muscles involuntary, which means we don't control it. The main function of muscle is for motion, which is a change in body position from moving one location to another or just waving your arm, moving your legs. Any type of motion is a function of muscle, but it could also function in movement within the body as air moving in the respiratory tract, food moving down the digestive tract, and the um, urine moving down the urinary tract. So movement within the body. It could also function in stabilizing the joints during movement or posture is very important role of muscles because without muscles, if you were sitting in a chair, there are muscles that are constantly contracting in order to keep that in that chair. If those muscles were relaxed, you would basically be a lump of clay that just kind of flop around. And smooth muscle, again, 
is regulates the volume, the space inside hollow organs, which causes movement with materials inside those organs. Lastly, the another function of muscle is thermogenesis, which means to produce heat. This is the reason why when you are cold, you shiver, because you shivering is a fast contraction of the muscle, which create heat. There are two characteristics of muscle. First of all is irritability. Irritability means that that you have to have some type of signal coming into the muscle that tells it to work and that is irritability and usually that comes in the form of an electrical stimulus or a signal from the nervous system. So a muscle cannot work without an actual direct information or message from the nervous system or the nerve. Contractility is the actual portion of the muscle where they have to shorten. So contraction or contract means that the muscle is shortening. So the way muscle works is that it actually pulls, because it's attached to the bone, it pulls the muscle that it's attached to, which causes movement. There are three coverings that we need to talk about. This is related to, remember way back when, we talked about the body membranes, that every organ that are not exposed to the outside is covered by a double layer called serous membrane. So the layers are basically those serous membrane. So endomycium is a covering that covers individual muscle cells. And muscle cell has a name of a myocyte is another word for muscle cell and also muscle fiber. Because when we talk about, these are the coverings around skeletal muscle. If you look at skeletal muscle, it's long and cylindrical. So they look like fibers, long strings. So they're called muscle fibers. Perimyceum surrounds something called a fascicle, which is our bundles of muscle fiber. And then epimyceum covers the entire skeletal muscle. So endomyceum will be the smallest covering. Then a bundle of that is then covered with perimyceum. And then epimyceum is the most outer layer. Those three layers, endomyceum, perimyceum, and epimyceum, come together and they join at the um, cl connection closer to the bone and they form, come together to form the tendon. The tendon is what is attached, that attaches the muscle to the bone, the periosteum of the bone, which is, periosteum is the outer serous membrane of the bone. Two other connective tissues that we need to talk about is aponeurosis and fascia. Tendon, aponeurosis, and fascia, they kind of run in together and they kind of mesh together so it's really hard to distinguish from one from the other. But aponeurosis are usually a flat, broad sheet of connective tissue that give it extra support to the muscle or stabilization to muscle. And fascia is a little bit thinner but it kind of made up with the same dense connective tissue as tendon. Areas you will find aponeurosis and fascia will be around the bottom of the foot, the hand, the six packs in the abdominal region, and then the skull. The, the, this is the aponeurosis which connects the muscles of the forehead to the ones at the back of the head. 6.1 notes homework is number one, how are skeletal and cardiac muscles similar and different? Number two, how are smooth and cardiac muscles similar and different? Number three, what are the relationship between endomyceum, epimyceum, and perimyceum?